Hello fellow Fay, it's Aya here telling stories and hopefully helping you tell better ones. Today I have a recording from an old radio appearance I did where I talk about filmmaking and attempt to define metafiction. I think we see a lot of appearances on big time shows from A-list celebrities and maybe not as much in between, so I hope you get something out of it. My next guest, we have um, a wonderful writer, filmmaker here in the studio with us. Aya is here. She's going to talk about um, all the work that she's done, uh, feature stories, and just the life of a writer and filmmaker. So welcome, Aya. Thanks so much for having me, Maria. You bet. You bet. So I'm, I'm happy that you're here, and uh, you know, there's so much to talk about. Where do you want to start? Oh, I don't want to start. So much to talk about. Yeah. Well, I know um, as a filmmaker and a writer, you've been doing that for a number of years, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, you have several uh, s stories out, uh, the fearsome, including Fearsome Pole, Real Boy, and Allegory. So how do you begin in, in your field of getting into, you know, the creative writing and filmmaking? I mean, what, what kind of, uh, what was your inspiration? I think it's just, it's uh, it's like a calling, it's like mm -hmm. the thing that, uh, it's calling at you, mm -hmm. you know, it, it requires you, so I just, I just think that filmmaking requires me. So, as uh, as this Emmy-nominated Emmy documentary, Beyond Belief, can you talk about that, what, what that was like and what, what that film's about? Yeah, sure, uh, that was local uh -huh. here, um, and I was just uh, one of the line producers on there and we just uh, we focused on interfaith relationships and dynamics in the community went to different events mm -hmm. interview people um, on the street it was really kind of a a mishmash of encounters mm -hmm. um, I think it was it ended up being about a half hour documentary really incredible opening I wasn't on the team that did the, mm -hmm. the opening and mm -hmm. the closing but uh, but it was it was a really cool documentary I think it was very relevant at the time I think this was back as 2016 mm -hmm. or something like that, but interfaith relations was very much in the conversation. Well, based on the titles of, of your work, Fearsome Pole, Real Boy, uh, and so on, are your is your work would you say um, political? Does it have a point of view? Is it? Can you talk about that? That's a really good question. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, well, it is fiction. Uh -huh. uh, the perspective is. I wouldn't say. I don't know that I would say political, but I would say somewhat satirical, mm -hmm. kind of like a whimsical satire, a la Willy Wonka, something like that. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Because you talk about uh, writing, you aspire to write metafiction for well, for a film, full time, cable books, and uh, and so on. Can you talk about metafiction? Uh, yes, so <laughs> metafiction is a big umbrella term that has been used to describe any fiction that's self-aware or any mm -hmm. stories about characters who know that they are not real. Um, I'm taking this more into a metaphysical context, so I want to know what fictional characters actually, uh, what they are in a metaphysical context, what we mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. uh, in the sense of uh, consciousness and how do we actually relate to the things we make. Um, so I do aspire to be the world's leading authority on this niche topic that maybe nobody really cares wow. about. <laughs> Not a lot of competition, though. So, um, you know, I might be the only one aspiring to be an expert in metafiction, so that makes it easier. Um, but I'm just, I'm deeply passionate about asking this existential question about how do we know who we are mm -hmm. and how is that reflected in the stories that we make. Wow. So, you know, something that the questions that you ask, it's something that, that we all 
at one time may ask ourselves, so there's that connection between the viewer and then the filmmaker or the screenwriter, right? I hope so. Yeah, I, I would so. think so. If you would share with us your, your website and any other sort of social media so um, folks who are listening and are interested, they can find out more about you because I also know that you like to teach the craft as well. Yes, I do. Um, I do sometimes give lectures and mm -hmm. write courses and that sort of thing. So um, you can find me on most platforms online. I love this write-up that you sent me where you say, my favorite moments in life include opening a new pen mm -hmm. and dragging the skinny blue playhead and Premiere Pro. Yes. Premiere Pro. That's the uh, video editor. So the little blue playhead is the, the skinny little line that kind of shows you where you are in the video. And you can kind of scrub it back and forth. <laughs> I really enjoy it. I, I like that, those favorite moments. New pens, we, we get that. Oh, um, gosh, yeah. So um, when, when folks come to you and, and want to um, sign on with you for you to teach them screenwriting and that sort of thing, do you, do you have a criteria for, for people that, that are wanting to begin this? I mean, do you have some sort of, you know, this is how we begin, the uh, beginning, middle, and end. I mean, is there some sort of... Um, template that you use to work with them? Mm. That's a very and course, decisive question. Well, and of course it depends on what they want to, to write about or, you know. Yeah. Um, well, really, criteria is simple. You just have to have an intention. Mm -hmm. You just have to have a mm -hmm. why um, as to why you're doing something. And then I also try to take it from what am I really going to provide this person because uh, I might have, you know, many years experience, but I'm not... Uh, there are people who are consulting in this field who mm -hmm. have a lot more professional experience mm -hmm. than I do. So my goal really is how can I help you with the metaphysical aspect? Like if you are dealing with fictional characters, what can I tell you that nobody else can about how mm. to relate to them and how to pull a central question from your character that's then going to drive the story? You know, I, if, if you just did, tuned in, <laughs> this is Maria Vasquez Boyd. I'm talking to guest a filmmaker, writer, Aya. We're talking about uh, the metaphysical relationship with creativity, right? Yeah. And you're teaching them, uh, folks, how to write better fiction through that. I hope so. Yeah. Do you have any events, any upcoming um, workshops that you want to share with us? Or, or do people just reach out to you on an individual basis and, and say, I want to work uh, with you on this? Well, I would definitely encourage anyone to reach out to me, for sure. I do have a course uh, coming out. I'm going to put it online so that any, everyone can um, be a part of it. And it's based on my workshop on the five steps to writing compelling characters, which a lot of people in the community have mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. already gone to. So I'm expanding that um, in, into a course. So. You know, there are a lot of... Uh yeah, events and and sometimes you just you just have to put one foot in front of the other and, and be there, be present. Just show up. It. Yeah. That's it. You won. If you've shown yeah. up, you've won. Yeah, That's I it. love that. Is there anything that we left out that you want to share with our listeners? I I feel like um, I feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> <laughs> well, your questions are really good. Okay. Uh, a lot of people my age who are questioning, you know, what they want to do and whether or not they should follow their passion. Um, I talk about this a lot mm -hmm. online, mm -hmm. whether to follow, quote-unquote, follow your passion. What a passion is, what a calling is, what the difference is. Um, but I would say for anyone out there who's facing a crisis about what they should do, or rather how much time to dedicate to it, um, to really ask yourself to, to prioritize happiness and to see happiness as an accomplishment in and of itself, mm -hmm. and to, to ask yourself what it is that can't what needs you and not so much what mm. you need. Mm. What do you care what people think? Yeah. And why? Yeah. We're all going, we're not getting out of this alive. Nobody. Yeah. yeah. So, and you know, nobody, here's the thing about your excuses, is nobody actually cares about your excuses. <laughs> That's the thing. No, Nobody cares. Yeah, and then you, you begin to find the people, you surround yourself with people who will kind of get you, you know, to where you need to be with encouragement or support or, you know, let me, you know, experience. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I mean, like when I met you, I'm, I'm always pleasantly surprised by the people I meet and how often, maybe it's just the city, but people are usually willing to extend a lot of support when they see someone who knows what they want. Exactly. Well, thank you for that. Is there anything that we left out, left out that you want to mention at this time? Again, uh, your website? Oh, the website is shethewriter.com. Feel free to find me on there and 
let's let's chat. And there's uh, several videos attached to that. Oh yeah. Right. Weekly videos on the YouTube channel, live shows, writing vlogs, advice. Um, I do. I, I, there's just there's a lot. There's weekly articles. She's and videos, a writer. So there's <laughs> there's there's a lot of content online. So it's uh, you know have a ball, find what you like. Terrific. We love you. Thank you so awesome. much for coming in and be Thank safe. Thank you so much. You bet. If you like this video, please share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.